So I, I learned of Kobe's story on the internet, like many yeah. people have, which must have been so weird for you to so have weird. have this like overnight, you're like a trending story on the internet. <laughs> but for people who might not have seen the story, Kobe was part of a program um, based in Chicago. What is the what is the organization? It's called Crushers Club. Yeah, the Crushers Club. We a boxing program, and uh, we train boxer program. Yeah, boxing program, mm -hmm. and we uh, mentor kids from ages eight to eighteen. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually the supervisor there. Oh, you're the supervisor there now. Yes. And how long you, you? But you started as a. I started as a trainer. I mean, as a um, employee, basically just working out, you know, and things like that. So the, the information that's been floating around, there was an image. Yeah. Of um, the woman whose organization it is. Her name Sally. is Sally, right? Right. Yeah. Cutting your dreads. Yeah. And the, and the caption read, "Trump supporter cutting dreads <laughs> off." Yeah. Well, so, I, I seen that. I and seen I saw that. you kind of uh, speak out about it and say, "Listen, the, I, she cut him because I wanted her to yeah, cut that's, him." Yeah, that was something I wanted to do. But when you wake up to that and you see your name in a story like that, what are you feeling like? Um, first off, she's not a Trump supporter. She was desperate for help. For, she even asked Obama for help once. So uh -huh. you know, when you're desperate for help and you're trying to do the right thing for people that you can't do it for or you ain't got the funds for, you're going to be desperate to ask, you know, whoever you think can help or mm -hmm. whoever you can reach out, out to. So mm -hmm. that's what she did. Which is not which is not which unheard is, of. It's yeah, funny because I, yeah. I, I was listening to The Breakfast Club this morning. They were reporting on the story, and I knew you were coming. Uh, and I heard Charlemagne say the same thing. Like, um, that's the president, with however you feel about him or not. If, yeah. you're, if you're running an organization and you're trying to get some money and some help and some... then that. Yeah, you're, some desperate attention. You're going, you're going to ask or take anybody advice or attention, you know? Okay, and then it was yeah. also portrayed as if, well, two things. Number one, that she was like, either somehow forcing you or made you cut it because that is how you were supposed to get ahead in life. Oh, no. See, actually, I put the quote on uh, symbolize a, a, a change. I did that because I actually told her to take the picture so I could have something to remember of my dreads. See, I grew up in Chicago. You know, it's, it's dangerous. It's very... It's very violent, though, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's the no sleep on the violence, though. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. everywhere you go, it's dangerous. And, like, I grew up a product of that. And I'm tr I was try I'm trying to overcome it, thanks to Sally. And I am overcoming it now still to this day, thanks to her. And it was just some, because Dreads was a trend back then. It, w it wasn't a culture for the house that, you know, in Chicago, we ain't look at it as that. Me personally, I looked at it as a nice haircut. You know, it was a style. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what it was, a hair. And everybody just around me was like, you know, we're going to get our dreads, we're going to get our twisties, you know, we're going to see who's wrong. You know how that mm -hmm. is. And of course. We just went from there. And when I wanted to cut it was because I wanted to change something. And I felt like it had to start within me, within myself and my hair. I thought I was a stuff with my hair, you know. So I just asked her to cut it because I felt comfortable and I knew her. To, of cutting hair mm -hmm. because she cut her daughter hair a lot so that's how that came up do you feel like you have to um i don't know defend her now um yes i do because they making the scene they paint trying to paint an image of her of some she's not you know she's a nice woman you know people should get to meet her before they try to accuse or say mm -hmm. she this and that like mm -hmm. you don't know her like she didn't been there for us through lots it been times where I didn't have no food at home and I can call on Sally and she's, okay, honey, I will be there in a few minutes to come get you so we can go get this or that for you. It, it's been multiple times. Like, we got the, um, it's called Cops and Crushes. We do, like, every other three weeks, every other two weeks, we uh, go out with cops. She even took me fishing with them for the second time in my whole 19 years of living. And it was fun, like, fabulous. So tell me your story. Tell me how you even got there to the point where you're, like, in probation. Trying to um, well now I'm off probation too. But good, good um, for you. thank God. She, uh, my probation officer wanted to give me something to do because I was too busy. I mean, I had too much free time on my hands. Mm -hmm. And she uh enrolled me in the program. Actually. How old were you? I was 15, 14 and a half. Oh wow, what were you? What did you get arrested for? Uh, strong on robbery, but they dropped the charges down. Got it. And I was on uh, mandatory failure probation. So I had to, you know, I had to go there. That was something the judge recommended me to do. So I went there. And, but when I first was thinking about it, like now as I'm thinking, sitting here thinking about it, it was like, uh, do I really want a boxer? Uh, no, until I actually got there. And I had to build my trust within the the talent. You know, I had to gain that. I had to, that was something I had to want to do for me to do it. And I actually started working out 
and started training with the kids and starting to get to know Sally and the other uh, trainers there, and it was actually great. Mm, good for you, baby. And I'm actually glad that she actually came into my life. She saved me. If I, if, if I ain't had her, I'd either be dead or in jail right now. Wow. I heard you had been shot too, right? Yeah, I've been shot 14 times. How I, many uh, times? 14. Jesus, baby. How does that happen? Before 15 years old? Uh, uh, I was 16 at the moment. You were 16. It's actually, it was like actually three to two months after I cut my dreads off, I got shot. Wow. I got shot out at one time. Jesus, baby. So you're lucky to be even here. Yeah, I'm blessed. I'm very blessed. Yeah, you are blessed. God bless. You brought um, Elizabeth here with you today, who also, you were in the, um, you're a mom. I'm a crusher mom. You're a crusher mom. I really wanted to meet you guys when they said you were in town and you were doing some press. I thought mm-hmm. it would be interesting to hear your side of the story because mm-hmm. right now, the way social media is, it's like you only get a piece of it, right? Yeah, and then yeah. because, I guess because Jay-Z and his connection to the NFL now and because mm-hmm. they made a donation, it mm-hmm. became an even bigger story. Mm-hmm. Um, but behind the story, I just I thought it was interesting that you chose to like be like, hey, hey, guys, this is, yeah. not, this yeah. is not what you think it is. And then to also hear give you a chance to speak on what the other side what the other side yeah, of this is Miss Sally she's an awesome lady she has done a lot for the community mm-hmm. and um, they looking at her as a white woman mm-hmm. in the black community mm-hmm. but people fail to realize people in the community haven't even did half of the things that she has done for these boys she has turned a lot of these boys lives around my son for example mm-hmm. I was shot in the stomach with my son what do you mean Elijah while he was Emmanuel in there Tribbett. yes You were pregnant? Yes, I was three months pregnant. In Chicago? In Chicago. Shot Mm -hmm. in your belly? Shot in my belly. And your baby survived? And Elijah Emanuel Tribbett came along. God bless. I know what that name means, right? God's prophet meant to be here. Mm -hmm. Wow. And look at him now. A two-time Olympic winner, one-time silver glove winner. Six and a half years. He been been hanging with Miss Sally. Miss Sally has helped my baby out in tremendous ways that I can't do it What sometimes. did she do? She's not a boxing coach. No, she's not a boxing coach. <laughs> she saved lives. Mm-hmm. She helped these kids out in, in the community. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, for example, like we said, we're we in, we in Inglewood. We're in a hard community. Mm-hmm. And half of these kids ain't never left the community. Mm-hmm. Miss Sally, she does everything. Some kids ain't never been bowling. Some people don't even have a video game in their room. I got to come visit our gym. The gym is awesome. Really? When I say the gym is awesome. I would love awesome, to go see it. I would love yeah. that. You are so welcome. So you can see our, hall, our wall of fame. 10 years, 12 years worth of kids came and gone, became something, made something out themselves. Mm-hmm. You know? And, and then I don't understand how people would put her in such a label like that. Because it takes, it takes a lot of love, time, patience, energy, and so much unselfishness. Yeah. Seven days a week for, with kids that you don't even know. The internet is a funny thing, yeah. right? Because you only get a tiny piece of the story. Mm-hmm. And I can imagine, yeah. you know, the optics of it, like how it looks, right? Mm-hmm. So you see this woman. And also there was a really horrifying story not that long ago of this wrestler who got his, his did you see that? The kid, he was a wrestler and the and the um, the coach. It happened here in Jersey, right? So the kid had dreads. Yeah, to cut his locks And they, on. yo, they made the, they forced him to like, if he wanted to continue playing, he was a wrestler. If they wanted to continue, and, the, and the, with no love, no care. I mean, I was furious and heartbroken to watch it because the kid was crying and they and there was mm-hmm. no reason to cut it. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't interfering with the wrestling. So that happened, right? Mm-hmm. Then they see the visual optics of this woman cutting this this young man's dreads and mm-hmm. with with the caption that reads, "She's a Trump supporter," and and then it brings up all those feelings mm-hmm. about people judging you for what kind of hair you have because it really shouldn't matter. You you know you yeah. it does it doesn't matter, right? right? And so. Mm-hmm. You can't understand if you're just fed, and this is the age of the internet, so if you're just fed that little bit of information, right. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's outrage, mm-hmm. right? It's yeah. known outrage. Yeah. Which is why when they, when they said you wanted to come up and tell the other side of the story, I was really interested yeah, to hear that. Sally is an awesome lady. But you can see if you only saw that, how that yeah. could make somebody feel. Yeah, I could. Oh, yeah. 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 See, right. it would have been better if it was on his page. I think it was on your page. No, uh-uh, it was on the it was Sally on page. The Twitter, yeah. The Twitter it was on Twitter. Twitter. Now, now switch it around. Now, what if it was on his page? Now, what if the story would have been then? Three years later? So this was three years different. ago that this happened? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Three, three years ago. And he, that was his choice. He was young. So how he is she handling this? And are you... and and Because I saw some of the reaction to you talking about it, and it was like, oh, he's trying to defend her, which you were, when I don't know why that's a bad thing, but that was the tone of like... Um, well, she actually tore up about it. And this is mainly not even really her, but she, she just mad about the image 
that she, that she getting put on, mm-hmm. and it's mainly her her kids, her two daughters. Mm-hmm. They they hurt because people sending all type of like spam, basically, you know. Mm-hmm. And her kids is biracial, mm-hmm. so it's just something you know. Greatness come with, come with haters, don't it? Yeah, everything yeah. good. It, it comes with a lot of. You know, yeah. And that lady has did so much in the hood, and that, so much. And that's why I wanted to go back to that. Like, she built the trust with us. Like, I was so comfortable with it because I knew her, even though I didn't like. I feel like I know you, you know. And I, ain't, you know. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. You know, I, I ain't even been <laughs> with you for an hour, and then she show us new things that we don't get to see every day, or that mm-hmm. our mamas ain't got the time to show us because she. One uh one single whole mother, you know, struggling at home and trying to make ends meet. And Sally show us different things. Like she made she actually helped me get my first bank account. I'm nineteen years old. That's my my first, first bank, bank account. account. Wow. Took a She do a lot. Helicopter riding. Half we used to go to the, the neighborhood. skating they ring. Mm-hmm. They can't afford half the things. Mm-hmm. She showed them there are better ways and better things to do in life besides the streets. She has turned a lot of kids' life around. For example, my godson, oh, he was such a troubled child. When I say a troubled child, he was a troubled child. <laughs> he got with Miss Sally, Valley Victoria Children High School, four years scholarship, Alabama State, football, basketball, a lot of other kids. What is your role now as like, a, you you called yourself a mom? I'm a, a crusher mom. A I don't crusher miss, mom. I don't miss no fight. I'm the co-carrier, the water, the washer. That's me. Anything <laughs> that do with them kids, to, to see that they doing good. So some of them kids enjoy that. Yeah. They get they get to experience a lot of things. Like my son, my son didn't think he was gonna be a silver glove gold winner. He yeah. never thought that never in his life. Yeah. Elijah came a long way with his health problems, and Miss Miss Sally just brung, brung it out of him. Yeah. She brung it out of him. She gave him something to look for every day. Do you? She picks the kids up from school every day, drops them off. Yeah, you know. I mean, she sounds like an amazing lady. But can, but do you think that she's made mistakes in terms of, and maybe not on purpose, but maybe everybody makes mistakes mm-hmm. because you know there's some tweets, the All Lives Matter tweet. There was the uh, there was something else. I guess just the Trump. The, the... Um. Well, I can go back to the picture of the haircut, like people, because it was like, just because it was off the Crushers Club account, mm-hmm. symbolizing for a new trend. You know, when when with her. Showing a picture of cutting my dreads, it's like, okay, yeah, she could have used her words betterly. She could have chose her words wisely, but we didn't mean no harm. Like, even if I could go back in time today, yeah. two, three years from now, I would still let her cut my hair. I don't regret none of it. It's not mm. crazy to say cutting your hair to start a new phase. I yeah. cut my hair. It, back in the day when it's I used to break up, I cut my hair because yeah, it's a start. you want to start a new time. Yeah, and it's a start within yourself, right? Yes, within myself, hundred mm-hmm. percent, and I've absolutely mm-hmm. done that. Right, I've so absolutely you... cut my hair. You have a breakup, you do short hair, but because yeah. there's so much sensitivity about the biases associated, especially with black hair, that's why it's a sensitive subject. Yeah. So unknowingly, mm-hmm. I could see how a mistake like that could happen, but also it's a, it is a mistake. It's like a it's yeah. like a blind spot. Yeah, everybody you know? makes mistakes. Yeah, to somebody, mm-hmm. but I didn't look at it as a culture then, or or you know something so big. Yeah. It, was, it was just dreadlocks to me, you know. Mm-hmm. So what's the goal now? Like what? What? How's everybody? What's the forward? Mo- you just keep going, right? You keep. Yeah, we we gonna keep going. I'm I'm here to support her because if you take Miss Sally away, you, you let a lot of kids down, and I need her. <laughs> yeah, I, I need her in my son's life and these other kids' life. Mm. So why would you take away something from kids that's, that's better in them? Mm-hmm. That's better in them. I get that. Yeah, why would you take that away of one picture? Yeah. You got to get to know her. Oh, she's an awesome lady, y'all. Y'all got funny. You got to meet her. And I know there was uh, a, a lot of conversation about the funding, or I guess because the donation was made, yeah. right? So uh-huh. the Inspire Change mm-hmm. program, which I mm-hmm. guess Rock Nation is behind now, and then... And we trying to... She's trying to... Get a, so a what is that facility for the kids. I was gonna say, what well, does that money do? Well, she's not gonna try to. We are actually is gonna get a bigger facility. We gonna um, fundraise. We are gonna try to fundraise like more activities in the gym because we do have a boxing studio mm-hmm. and I, like what I do personally, um, flowers and bees. So we are gonna try to get more like what is activities. That? Um, well, it's a garden mm-hmm. I work at. It's a flower farm mm-hmm. and like. We harvest Teach and grow uh, flowers and so, yeah, and st- and things like, like that. that. And we have bees there, over like five thousand bees there that I work with. And it and gives stuff. and it gives us a chance to to hire more kids that've been around. Give how long? Is, how long has the organization been 
uh, running for? Oh, over 10 you know? years. Over 10 years. My son's six and a half years. Your son's been there six and a half six years. And a half. Sorry, baby. Six I really... and a half years. And what was the root of it? Like, how did it come to be? And do you know? Or She started out in the park. Well, the root, mm-hmm. what, uh, my perspective is when she didn't have nobody, she wanted to help people. And the same way that we ain't have nobody growing up, she, she is that somebody that we do got. So we appreciate her. Even the, the youth that don't come back, even the grown men that don't come back, they still will come back and walk past and come up and speak to her, give her a hug. A lot of people respect her for what she do. And that I think that people should see and just stop trying to judge and go off a little image or, you know, a little two-minute picture that I, I posted, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, man, that damn internet. Yeah, <laughs> so you just keep moving forward, right? That's yeah, it. Yeah, all we gotta do is keep fighting. Going one, two, forward. one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two. So what are you gonna do? What's next for you? You just gonna you gonna what what is your goal? Like what do you what are your well, goals now? Well when I get back, I'ma just keep working with the youth. I'm gonna keep motivating the kids. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't I don't even supposed to be walking right now. So I'ma just keep blessing people. Did they tell you you weren't gonna walk? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's a Were blessing. you down for a while? No, I actually, I was in a ho- I was in the hospital for two and a half weeks, and in a uh, rehab rehabilitation center for two and another half weeks, and then I got out. My mama told me I wasn't gonna get out on my birthday, but God worked in mysterious ways. I got out on my birthday, literally. I got shot January twenty third, and I my birthday February twenty third. I got out ten thirty that morning, uh-huh. and I was on my way home in a wheelchair, but I could walk. Cause only reason I was in a wheelchair because my leg was dead, and I got a fake uh help screws and rod right there replacing for my hip bone that's mm-hmm. broke my god man yeah it was tough you said earlier when we were talking you said that if it wasn't for the, uh, her or this program that you would have been uh in, j- in, in jail, jail or, or dead. dead yeah why do you so what 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 was it that stopped you from that like why what do you attribute that to what do you it was it was my willpower you know it was something i wanted to do i yeah. wanted to be better than just a, a thug or a street nigga i see what it do to people you know yeah. I'm an eyewitness, like I, I see it hands on and I just want to be better than that. I already got shot, like what more What more do I want to go? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to get shot up till I die. And she just been there, like she helped me through, through, the, through so much. She helped me have faith. I was so traumatized to even go outside and she brought me out and took me out one day to go get something to eat with the Dave and Buster with the kids. Mm-hmm. And it so was just feeling never been there. Mm-hmm. She showed them things that they never seen in a lifetime, mm-hmm. and she showed them you go the right way. This, this, you can do this for yourself. You know, she she pushing them, she pushes, pushes. Like for example, my son was failing in school, got him a tutor, straight A student right now, mm-hmm. and he still go to school. I mean, he still box, but no problem. No, he's not failing anymore. Yeah, he's doing a good job. What about the narrative about the hair? We already got, we already talked about the fact that that wasn't the case. Like you yeah. wanted to cut your hair, you asked yeah. somebody that you trusted to do it, and she did it. I I guess there's been some narrative about that. That's the conversation within the organization. Like for change, you should cut your hair. Like no, somehow, dre- you know, natural hair or no, dreads. Uh, is we not- have we actually have a pro fighter there. His name is Isaiah. He's been there for so long. He he been there since like nine years old. He's 23 now. He mm-hmm. has dreads himself. Mm-hmm. And also so that though symbolized change. It was just the fact I grew up in the ghetto. I grew up mm-hmm. in Inglewood. That was your fi- personal feeling. Right. That was mm-hmm. how I personally felt at the, at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, she don't or I don't. I don't even. I don't even uh, would tell nobody you got to cut your head just for a change or a better life. If you didn't did stuff in the past that you're not proud of and you had your dread, I mean, then that's okay. That's your decision. Mm-hmm. Just like how it was for me. But no, you ain't got to cut your hair for no change. You majority, can, you can, the yo. majority of the young men there have locks. My son has locks. Yeah. I have yeah. locks. That must be so frustrating then for the, you. Even them, I do the hair. Yeah. I've been doing natural hair for 23 years. Mm-hmm. Even the so, uh, studio... Even the studio, the the person who makes beats in the back, JoJo, he has dreadlocks and mm-hmm. been with Sally for so long. And he still have his dreads. Like, you can see his pages where he got little, little worms and they long now. <laughs> for real. So if people want to support the organization in some way, how do, what, what can people do? First of all, come come visit us. Mm-hmm. Come visit us and see see what our home is like there. What them boys is look forward to every day. Yeah. They look forward for every day. Give them something positive to do. By the okay. time they get home, 6, 7 o'clock at night, 
Ain't nothing but do to go home, go to bed. <laughs> yeah. They ain't got time for the streets. Yeah, you got to keep them busy. Yeah, you keep them, you keep them busy. Keep them kids That's why busy. you keep them focused. And we reward them. You show them, hey, you do life better in life. You can, you can, get, you, you can have <clears throat> this in life. Mm-hmm. You don't have to all be bad. Cause like I said, a lot of them kids come from broken homes, and they get there a second home. Everything they don't have at home is there. How the else love, can, the care. How else can if you can't come down there and check it out? Like, how is there another way people can see or or or, or support you guys? Or oh yes, uh, um, the Crusher Club. We have a Crusher Club page, the uh-huh. Twitter. Uh-huh. We have all that. Okay. <laughs> Is there everything under the crush? You was ready to go to war, weren't you? <laughs> I can I see it. I love that for my son. You just don't know. I can and see you. Take that I can away, see you getting fired you take that away. Like, it's okay. This is, a, this is a safe place. Yeah, yeah you take that away. My son, my son and my nephew. I got she nephews came in, in like, boxing. She my came in and gave me that face like, look, listen. Mm-hmm. Damn. My son, it took my son a whole year to get one fight. I got my two nephews in now. They've been there for two months. Got his first fight, came home with a big old trophy. Wow. You know what I'm God bless. Your son yeah. is a miracle already that he survived. He's a miracle. Yeah, he's, he's so yeah. strong. Um, back to what you said, you said, you said if, even if they can't come out, well, we do have park fights like since the summertime. We have them every Thursday. Uh-huh. And night, yes. You could come, they could just come visit a fight, you know, come see y'all little guys in action. We mm-hmm. actually have a, have uh, his name Marquise. Uh-huh. His name, his, uh, Two times. Yeah, two right. His like nickname two times. Two times. Yeah. Oh, he's something he like else. thirty four and two. He mm-hmm. a, he a dog. Like right. he a beast. Yeah. Like we got little monsters in our like they ready. Some of the kids I never thought they was gonna get a, a a belt. My son was so happy to get his first belt. That big old gold heavy. He was he, it made him. Who are they fighting though? Who says like who's park? park it's park district. Park district. It's a different park. park. Got it. Yeah. It's different parks. They train different. Got it. Mm-hmm. All right, give them the website again so people can know where to go. Crusher Club. That's all you got to look. Twitter, Facebook, the Crusher Club. The Crusher Club. The Crusher yeah, Club. Crusher Club. Everything. I want to come Crusher see. Club. Crusher you are Club. so welcome. Come I, w- I definitely want to. And I love boxing too, by the way. So I would love you, to see you. You would that. love it. All right, good. I'm you coming. Love it. You you welcome. More than welcome. Thank you for coming and sharing your story today. Anytime. Thank it was you for really, letting us share. Thank you. It was really nice to meet you. Thank, thank you for having us here this, this evening. Mm-hmm. One time, everybody. Can we have a <laughs> Kobe and Elizabeth. It's about 105.1.